I'm James Gill with Gill Garden Center, Corpus Christi. We're going to talk about container gardening. So we'll start with why container garden? Well, you can container garden with any little bit of space you've got, pretty much. It can be on the doorstep, it can be on a balcony. You have uh, great drainage with gardening uh, in a container, which you don't have in Corpus Christi clay dirt. It's so flat that there's a lot of places that don't have adequate runoff, and then that clay just holds onto water forever. So you got great drainage. That's a big, big thing. One of the best things about container gardening is that it is so easy, it's so quick. I'm gardening, then I'm done. It is so easy. Also, it's a great way to avoid uh, soil-borne diseases, soil-borne insects like nematodes. Uh, just a great way to garden. Now, what are the disadvantages? You're not going to feed a family of six with one strawberry plant. You do have to water more often. But really, there are so many advantages that everybody should container garden, even if they've got a garden in the ground. Number one thing I say to people when they say they want a garden, I say, show me the water. If you don't have water close by, it's a failure. And it's amazing how many times people have said, oh, I don't know, uh, how are we going to water this? So find the water. You need a good quality source of water. City water is OK. It's got a lot of dissolved salts in it, but it's not uh, not really going to be a problem. Rainwater is better if you can collect that. Uh, also, air conditioned condensate water is excellent, excellent. Has no salts in it. You really get a better quality plant, faster growth with good quality water. Another thing about location sunlight. All day is really best, but not necessary for everything. Half day does a pretty good job. There are some things you can even grow in dappled light. That's going to be the leafy plants like spinach or chard. If you have to grow a large fruit like a tomato, yeah, you're going to need four hours of sun or more. So look for the sun. You want an area that's not too windy. If you're out uh, in the country with no trees, no buildings, that's a recipe for disaster. Those poor little plants just don't like getting whipped around. So maybe there's a fence, maybe there's lots of trees. If you're in a windy situation, you may end up deciding to build a small, simple structure that's got some shade cloth on it or some lattice panels just to break down the speed of that wind. And then another thing is you want it to be accessible. If it's too far away, too hard to get to, you're not going to see your plants often enough. And without your attention, they're either going to dry out or bugs are going to get after them and you don't get to them fast enough to save them. So have it close by so you visit your garden often. It's going to be better for your soul too. Selecting a container. The easy and, and obvious choices are plastic. It's cheap. We sell these brand new at seven bucks. It'll last you probably five to seven years, depending on how much it sits out in the sunlight. Light and easy to move around. Uh, or clay, beautiful. Had this one for 12 years, looks like it's new. It's gonna last another 10 or 20. Uh, both of those are great choices. You can also go a little bit crazier. This is an ice chest and it's full of rainwater. So just by the way, it's also a great way to store rainwater for your garden. I told you, rainwater's great for gardens, but you can put that underneath the eaves once the rain stopped, close it up, no mosquitoes. And then also, just any other type of industrial or otherwise plastic container that you've got. One thing is adequate size. You don't want something that's too small but this is going to be a good one. And then always important, you've got to have drainage. And how many times have you been driving through the neighborhood and see an ice chest with the lid broken off on the side of the road. These make great containers. They've got good volume, they insulate the soil, and they've already got handles on them. In this case, it's got wheels. I really like these livestock watering troughs. You would get them at a farm and ranch place like uh, Tractor Supply. Uh, they hold a lot of soil do a great job of growing plants. They look pretty cool too. Um, one thing you need to remember, always drainage. 
Make sure you've got good drainage holes drilled through the bottom. How many times have I said drainage already? Well, I'm going to say it again. Make sure you've got good drainage out of your pot. So a lot of people think that means you have to put gravel in the bottom. I am not a gravel guy. If you think about the fact there are millions of plants growing commercially in the United States and sold, they have to be top quality, they have to be grown fast, they have to look great. And there's not gravel in any of them. That's not the best way to have drainage. Open hole in the bottom is the best drainage, but you also may not want the soil kind of dribbling out the hole, so you can use a pot shard and place that over the hole. Another way I like to do it is take a piece of window screen, put that in the bottom of the pot, then put your soil on top. That's going to hold the soil in, but still allow for good drainage, just making sure that this piece is not too flat. Another way your drainage can get blocked up is if the bottom of your container conforms tightly to the surface. It can also almost create like a suction that prevents the water from running out of the bottom. If that's the case, then two good options. You can just set a couple of tiles down, set the pot on top of that so you break that suction so water can flow out freely. If you want it to look really cool, you can use pot feet. Okay, choosing plants. Most important thing of all is the timing. You've got to be planting the right plants at the right time. If you see your neighbor's got a great big beautiful tomato plant full of tomatoes and you think you're going to go out and plant one, you're all wrong. That time has passed. So get good information, local information. What you have on the seed packet, it's way too generalized. It's not going to tell you when to be planting in your region. So if you'll go to the Grow Local website here in Corpus Christi, that's great information, as local as you can get or talk to your county extension agent, see if they have a good schedule for your county. Next thing would be size. You don't want a plant that's oversized for the pot. If it's overgrown, it's going to have a much harder time getting started. So pick something that's moderate in size. Not necessarily tiny, but not too big. Don't think that great big plant in a small pot is a good value. It's not. So another thing to think about is how much production you're going to get out of that plant. I love a big, beautiful broccoli. But it makes that big old head, you cut it, makes a few smaller heads, you cut them, that's done. But when you talk about greens like chard or uh, kale, they will produce and produce fall, winter, spring, and some of these crazy guys even in the summer. We're going to want to fill our pot. Make sure you leave plenty of room for watering. I add my amendments at this time. Put a little starter fertilizer mixed in. Another big bonus, people at Gill Garden Center are crazy for earthworm castings. Earthworm castings add a lot of micronutrients, a uh, lot of beneficial enzymes, and they've actually been shown to discourage sucking insects like spider mites and white fly, mealybug and aphids then handle your plant carefully. You don't want to just grab it and yank it up out. Turn it upside down, push on the bottom of the pot. You can also use a little knock like that to get it out. And if you've got tight roots, open them up a little bit. That's okay. When I said be careful, I meant mainly with this. Set it down in there, but not deep. It should be at the same level as the surrounding soil. The one thing that is different is tomatoes. You can plant, plant tomatoes deeper where the roots are below the surface and you have some soil around the stem. Everything else needs to be right up at the surface. So, enough space to hold adequate water. Plant's not buried, it's planted. So you can even use a lot of Household junk for containers. I'm going to get my little bit of starter fertilizer going in here. And this is awfully small. There's not much you could grow in here. But you can do radishes. So here we go. Level out our seed bed. Spread our seeds. Not too thick. They do need to be covered slightly. So I'll just sprinkle a little bit of potting soil on top. Generally speaking, 
two times the diameter of the seed is how deep that should be planted and gently firm. And in short order, we will have radishes. All right, so I've got the seeds watered in. I can go ahead and close this cover and put it on the counter in the kitchen. This will keep the moisture in so I don't need to worry about rewatering until I see the new seedlings coming up. At that time, I will open it up and take it outside. Watering. As plants grow larger, the water needs increase. When they're really small, they don't need a whole lot of water, so be cautious not to overdo it. Temperature, wind speed, humidity, all of those are main factors of when your plants are going to need water and you need to be sensitive to those. Don't go by the calendar because the calendar's going to be wrong. Weather changes and the plant's water needs change. You notice that I went back and forth from one container to the next to the next and then back again. That's important too because if you just give them one shot of water, it's just as likely to run down the side of the container and out the bottom without properly wetting out the soil. It's a good idea if you're using city water to periodically flush because salts from that city water slowly build up and if once a week, once every two weeks, you water till you see the water coming out the bottom and you water again and you water again so that you're redissolving and flushing those salts out, your plants are going to be healthier. But of course, if you can use rainwater, so much the better. If you want to minimize your watering effort, it's easy to set up a battery powered timer and drip emitters in each pot. It makes life easier. Fertilization, absolutely necessary. Your plants are not going to grow without it. Granular tends to last longer. Liquid, water soluble, goes to work faster, but you need to do it more often. This may be once a month, this may be every week. Fertilization, got to do it. You're going to have insects and diseases show up. So a good organic way to control them is uh, oils and soaps. And when I say that, I don't mean detergent. Now, detergent will kill insects, but it's much harder on the plants. So try to choose an, an insecticidal soap or an insecticidal oil. If you have your plants spaced out a little farther, and that's easy to do with containers, then you get more airflow, you get more sunlight. So both of those problems, insect diseases, should be lesser. One thing you should do is learn to recognize beneficial insects because they will help you. Of course, everybody knows ladybugs, but also the ladybug larva is even more effective than the adult, and it looks like a little alligator. Also the lacewing larva, they are stuck on that plant, and all they can do is roam and eat any visiting insect. So you really want to learn what those look like so that you do not kill them. Long term, you can grow okra or purslane in summer, not much else. So you either need to plant summertime flowers like zinnia or cover that soil in that pot because if you don't, you're going to grow a ton of weeds and they are going to keep coming back. Every time you try to replant, you start to water and fertilize. So you want to avoid those weeds by stowing your pots away or covering them or some means of keeping them fallow. Also keep in mind that potting soil does break down over time and loses its fluff. So after a couple of years, you're going to need to dump it out in the flower bed, on the lawn, rake it out, let it be a soil conditioner, and put in fresh potting soil. Container gardening is especially suited to kids or elders, but it can be fun for anyone, especially during trying times. It helps you focus on something you can control. You'll likely find some plants that just work great for you and some you just don't get along with. Accept your few failures and celebrate your successes. And thanks for coming to our garden.